What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master 1 and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes and this is going to be an update to my tier list including the genealogy of the Holy War units which were recently released and some of the other changes which I've made on my tier list. As always the link to my tier list is going to be in the description down below. So let's begin. So I'll go from left to right. So in the S tier I've put Sigurd, Ira and Arden. So pretty much all of the three sword units which got released with this uh, update are in the S tier. Sigurd is just a very very strong enemy phase unit and he's one of the best uh, frontline units in my opinion because of his abilities and uh, he's just a very reliable unit. Actually I think that uh, Sigurd is just much more reliable than Xander because he can take ranged hits much better. Now a lot of people might say that why I have not put him in the S plus tier when I have put Brave Ike in the S plus tier. You have to remember that uh, Brave Ike's Irvan is better than Sigurd's Crusader's Sword because Brave Ike's Irvan can work against melee attacks. So because of it, Brave Ike can actually survive against uh, some very very threatening Brave Sword units like Elencia and he can even survive red units because of his Irvan. He also has Bjork's Blessing which just nullifies any kind of horse emblem buffs and that is a bonus. Not to mention the minus one cooldown which Brave Ike has. Um, Saiger definitely got a Choose Their Legends treatment because he has got uh, the highest base stat total for a cavalry unit and he also got his exclusive skill and a pretty good legendary weapon but I think that he's S tier material. And then I've got Arden in the S tier as well. Arden comes out on 23rd as a Tempest Trial reward and a lot of people have been just hating on Arden because of his art and because of the whole IRA controversy so I think that Arden is actually a very very good unit because of his power of pursuit aka follow up ring. So Arden has got a monstrously high defense and very high HP and a pretty good attack and because of his follow up ring if he's above 50% HP he can uh, quad attack just any kind of unit be it in the enemy phase or be it in the player phase as long as they do not have sword breaker skill and if you give him something like death blow then he's extremely powerful he just completely outclasses Drog because uh, he does not even need to be plus speed IV and he does not need to run any kind of fury skill or anything like that to uh, have enough speed to quad attack units. He can just straight up quad attack units because of his follow up ring. So that's why he's in the S tier. Very strong unit in my opinion and he's gonna be a great free to play unit. And then we have got Ira. Now the reason why I've not put her in the S plus tier despite the fact that uh, if she runs this encounter she can pretty much be on the same level as Ryoma is because of the fact that at the end of the day she does not have disencounter built into her weapon. If she runs disencounter then she misses out on a lot of the options which Black Knight and Ryoma can take. Now Ira has got a much higher speed than Ryoma and only one less uh, base attack and a lot more defense but Ryoma can run distant defense and also distant defense sacred seal not to mention Black Knight steady breath uh, Black Luna combo is just very very busted so uh, that's why I think that Ira is in the S tier. She's a great offensive unit and she just outclasses a lot of the fast red units like Lucina, Lin, Hanna, Athena and Lanku and stuff like that. So that's why I have put her in the S tier. And then I've moved Navar from A plus tier to A tier. He's on the same level as Karel and uh, Hanna, Athena and Lanku are just much better Woda plus users. And then we move on to the red tombs. I've put Arvis in the A plus tier. Arvis of course cannot excel offensively as good as Celica, Tharja or Katarina and even if he tries to run a blade tome he will not be able to succeed that much because of his lower speed compared to those three. But still Arvis is a pretty good unit because of his tribe buff, his decent attack and the fact that he's faster than Lina and Sanaki. So that's why I've put him in the A plus tier. And now let's move on to the Lance units. I've put Tana, Cardelia and Camus from S plus tier to S tier. And they sure are pretty good units still but they're not really as oppressive as some of the other S plus tier units. The most oppressive units being Reinhardt and Brave Lynn, and the least oppressive one being uh, Ryoma. Tana and Cardelia excel with their Brave Lands and Fire Sweep Lands sets and uh, Camus is on the same level as Xander so that's why I've put him in the S tier along with Cardelia and Tana. And then for the Blue Mages I've put Taltui in the A plus tier. She's just a very solid high tier Blade Tome unit and uh, she's on the same level as some of the other Blade Tome Blue Mages so that's why she's in this tier. And then I've got Deidre in the S tier. Deidre is on the same level as Julia. They're pretty similar but they have got different functions with their weapons. They have got the same magical bulk if you add up the stats. So that's why um, she's in the S tier along with Julia. 
Deidre also has the ability to nullify all of the buffs, so that is also a really nice bonus. And uh, she's a bit faster than Julia, but lacks the nuking power, which she has. And for the green mages, I've also moved Bunny Camilla from the A tier to the A plus tier. Bunny Camilla is also a pretty good Ravento muser and a Reinhardt check, so she deserves the spot in the A plus tier along with some other pretty good Ravento minutes like Bowie, Female Robin, and Cecilia. And the last change which I've done for this tier list is I've moved all of the dragons one tier higher than what they were before. And this is because of Steady Breath. Steady Breath is such a good tool for the dragons because they have got Lightning Breath Plus which they can always run. And they can be very very solid frontline units with the help of Steady Breath and run some very very powerful specials. And that's why I've put these dragons one tier higher. And at this point Dragon Emblem only needs one more dragon with Hone Dragon skills and they will be good to go. They can definitely introduce Nasir from Radiant Dawn and he can have some ridiculously high attack and he was not really very fast I think. Yeah, so he can have low speed but very very high attack and it doesn't matter that he has got low speed because he can always run quicker post. So I think that we need a new Dragon unit with Hone Dragon skills because it just feels very incomplete at this point that all of the Emblem teams have got their Hone skills but Dragon Emblem has to use Dalthea to get the attack bonus and it's been a while since we have got a dragon unit. The last dragon unit that we got was uh, Ninian and that was months back and even if they release home dragon skill then still Dragon Emblem is gonna have a lot of trouble because of Julia and Deidre, especially Deidre because she can nullify the boost so a red dragon could not use its fortified dragon bonus to take hits from her and then kill her so that's why I think that they also need to add some kind of skill like Naga shield for Slotty which can uh, ignore the effective damage from the dragon slaying weapons. We have got that kind of shield skill for flying units and IO shield and for armor units and even for cavalry units. So that's why I would definitely like if intelligence systems would focus a bit more on the dragon units and uh, I'm also working on a different video which I think you guys might really really like. So in my summoning videos I've said many times that the reason why a lot of people have trouble with this game nowadays is that they're not able to get the focus units because there are just so many non-focus units which should not be in the 5 star pool. The problem is that intelligence systems does not clear the 5 star pool or the 4 star pool and they have not given us any kind of new 3 star unit for the summoning pool. We still have the same 3 star pool as we had when the game came out. So that's why I'm working on a video like that which I think you guys might like. And that is going to be my tier list update. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And as always, the link to my tier list is going to be in the description down below. So if you enjoyed, then please be sure to leave a like. And do not forget to subscribe for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.